What is all this stuff and what does it actually do? I'm going to try to answer those questions in this video. Welcome to Alaskan Astro. Everybody's got to have a gear video, right? So I wanted to give an overview of what each of these components does and how they work, kind of from the perspective of as light travels through the scope and through the imaging train, what's actually happening, and then we'll talk about some of the accessories as well. So again, this is going to be a pretty high level overview. We're not going to get super in detail on any one component, sort of just giving a rough overview of how this all works together. So starting out is my telescope. This is an Explore Scientific or Bresser, I'm not sure really the branding's kind of confusing, 8 inch imaging Newtonian. So space light comes in here, there's a big mirror at the bottom, it reflects back up, there's another little mirror at about 45 degrees here, and it reflects light into my imaging train. So the next thing as the light is traveling through, it goes through the focuser. I have a Moonlight CR2 Crayford style focuser, and it has a ZWO EAF autofocus motor on it. The EAF is just a glorified stepper motor in a metal box with a nice bracket and an ASCOM driver. And together, they just move the whole imaging train in and out so that it can achieve focus. Autofocus is technically not required, but it's a huge quality of life increase, especially if you're shooting mono and are changing filters throughout the night. It is essential if you're going to do any sort of automated rig and live the pisswa life. So the next thing that you can't really see right now is my coma corrector. This coma corrector is an Explore Scientific HRCC. And really all it's doing is just correcting the shape of the stars because they're imperfect because of how the mirror is designed. So it has glass elements that just make your stars look pretty. So the next thing in my setup is an off-axis guider you may be more used to seeing something that looks like this, a regular guide scope that would mount somewhere on the telescope. But they both basically take care of the same issue. Our mounts are not perfect and our polar alignment is almost never perfect. So as this thing is tracking through the night, the guider locks onto a star and it gives little commands to the mount to move left or right or up or down to make sure that there's no trailing in the stars and that everything stays put right where it's supposed to be. The off-axis guider just has a little prism that picks up some light from the edge of the light cone. So it's actually seeing the same light and same image sort of that your imaging camera does, which has some advantages. I'll make a video at some point about the differences between an off-axis guider and a more traditional guide scope, but they both do the same thing. So then next in my train, other than some spacers, is my filter wheel. I've got Optolong filters in here. They're kind of a mid-range and they seem to work really well for me. I've got regular LRGB HSO set in there so I can do broadband true color imaging and narrowband. And I need that because I have a mono camera here. My ASI 1600mm Pro. It's really a workhorse of amateur astrophotography and for being a little bit older it still takes great pictures. It's kind of handy that it has the little USB hub on there, but that's also whatever because it only has two ports and I have three things to plug in with the filter wheel, the guide cam, and the EAF. So it's sort of whatever. You could also get a $20 Amazon USB hub. So all of that is my imaging train. And then we'll talk a little bit about some of the accessories and other things that are on this setup. The next thing, the heart the soul, the foundation, the important part of your metaphor in your AP rig is the mount. I have an Atlas EQG. I've done the belt modification to it and the rail kit modification to it, and that's really made a big difference. I've got a video about that rail kit here, 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 here. Yeah, I actually really like my Atlas. Uh, it's really heavy and pretty hard to move, which is all right for me since I just have to haul it through the backyard. Uh, but it's been tracking pretty well for me and it moves my decently heavy gear around, so I'm pretty satisfied with it. The mount is the most important part of your AP rig. It does a couple things. For one, it just lets you point to whatever you're trying to take a picture of. And then also, it's what's going to be slowly tracking against the rotation of the earth throughout the night, holding whatever you're taking a picture of steady in the field of view of your camera. I've also got an EQ direct cable 
plugged in here so that my mount talks directly to my imaging laptop so that I can do things like plate solving and just clicking a button to tell it to slew where I want it to and making sure that my image is perfectly centered where I want it. But yeah, other than that, that's pretty much it for my rig. I've got a couple other accessories like my DIY power box. Uh, it just has AC power going in and then I've got a AC to DC converter in there and some cables coming out. I also built it so that it can control dew heaters with these little dials and then plug in there. It cost me maybe $30, $40 to build that rather than buying something for $400 or whatever they charge is ridiculous. So that powers everything on here and will control my dew heaters once I finally get those installed. That's the basics of an astrophotography setup. Light comes through your telescope, passes through the focuser, goes through my coma corrector, passes by the off-axis guider, goes through some spacers, goes through the filters, hits the sensor on the camera, and after some processing, hopefully you end up with a pretty wallpaper for your computer. The last bit of equipment is just a good place to set up your rig. This is where I set up most nights. Call it the pit. Got a pretty good view to the west and to the south. Clear over the top, a little bit of trees to the east and to the north, but since Polaris is so high, I usually get by just fine. So yeah, just remember to wear a coat because it's cold out there. Thanks for watching.